we are at the slopes of Mount Elgon, where I can envisage the great Mount Elgon. And today is the first Sunday in Epiphany. According to the Anglican calendar, today is a day that we commemorate and celebrate the revelation of the Savior Jesus Christ to the Gentiles. I'd like to tell you that our second reading was, or our first reading was drawn from the book of Isaiah, chapter 55, beginning to read from verse 1 to 11. I want to say that Isaiah was written by prophet Isaiah. Contrary to the speculations of the Bible critics, that there was a Trito Isaiah and a Deutro Isaiah. I want to say that I support the traditional Isaiah authorship. And uh, Isaiah is divided into two parts. Chapter 1 to 39 talks about God's judgment on the nations. Whereas chapter 40 to 66, there are consolations. And among the consolations are the songs of the servant. I want to talk about the suffering servant in chapter 53 and 54. And chapter 55, that is the core of our reading today, chapter 55 speaks about the great invitation. I want to begin my sermon today by saying there are many invitations in this world, in the contemporary world. Right now there are invitations by Tanga Tanga Brigade and invitation by Azimio La Umoja Brigade. There are also invitations by many people and many vendors and sellers of information. I remember with nostalgic memories one of the days when I went to the city, just as uh, some people know, I cannot drive. My wife, the priest, can drive, but me, I cannot. So I was walking and I saw an invitation to pick newspapers. I decided to boldly go and pick the newspaper. But the man declined because I was walking on foot. That invitation was not meant for me. It was an invitation for people who are driving. There are many invitations in this world, but I want to say that all these political invitations are temporal and self-serving. Invitation of advertisements are particularly invitations of an individual, only targeting the pockets of the individual. But allow me to say that in Psalm 55, we get the greater, in Isaiah 55, we, great, we get the greatest invitation. And the greatest invitation is by the suffering servant God who was revealed to the Gentiles during this Sunday of, of Epiphany. And I want to say, in the great invitation, there are three points that I want us to note. Number one, who is invited? According to Isaiah 55, everybody is invited. The ones who have resources and those who do not have. They are invited to this great invitation by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Allow me to say, wherever you are, the invitation of God belongs to you. And it is my prayer that you respond to this great invitation. Despite your tribe, your creed, the place where you come from, you are invited by God. The greatest of all invitation is for everybody. Jew, Gentile, Kalenjin, Kikuyu, Kisi, Marakwet, Embu, whatever the community we are invited by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Who is invited? Number one, everybody. The ones who have, the ones who do not have. It doesn't matter whether you are called a dynasty or hustler or struggler. All of us are invited by God. Without distinction, without disparity, He invites all of us. And it is my prayer that you are going to respond to this great invitation. Number three, the people who are invited are those who thirst. The earth, the world is full of many thoughts and longings. The soul of a man is restless. I remember I used to be a smoker. I used to smoke a cigarette called SM. I tried to leave it, I couldn't. The headmaster one time, David Nguti, the former 
vibrant, charismatic headmaster of French school, Kamsinga, caught us smoking and he caned us six strokes of the cane to kneel. He only injured our body, but he could not remove the urge and the appetite and the thirst for smoking. It is until when we meet our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, that is when the thirst is quenched. I remember the Samaritan woman. A woman went to the river at the wrong hour. Exactly at midday, she went to the river. Maybe because she was ostracized and uh, gossiped by other women who went in the morning, she went at midnight. Maybe to look for her customers, at midnight was the time. She had the thirst. And Jesus went from the known to the unknown. She said, woman, give me water. Then the woman said, how can a Jew and a Samaritan have anything in common? But, but Jesus continued to talk to this woman and tell her that if you knew the waters that I will give you, you could never have fasted and you could never have come and sought water again in this well. He said the well was given by their father Jacob, but the one who was there was greater than Jacob. Jesus Christ, the one who could heal all her thirst. Then Jesus went from the unknown to the known and he said, go and bring your husband. The lady said, I do not have one. Jesus said, you have said so. Because you have, the, you have had seven, six husbands and the one that you have is not yours. The woman said, are you not a prophet? Then she said, come and see the man who has told me everything. The man who can cure our thirst and, gives us, and give us the springs of living water. Who is the invitation for? The invitation is for everybody. Despite the economic situation, despite their challenges, the, 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 the invitation is for everyone. Number two, what do we get from the invitation? The invitation, God has something for us in the invitation. Number one, he gives us water that can quench our thirst. He satisfies our anger. Number two, he gives us milk that can nourish our bodies spiritually. And he gives us wine that is joy of the Lord. There are many challenges and worries in this world. It is only when we invite, when we accept the invitation of the Lord and Savior, when we accept his invitation, that is when we are going to have satisfaction. That is when we are going to have contentment. And that is when we are going to be settled. For in Christ we have all and everything in it. There are three metaphors there. Food, there is drink, there is food, there is drink. And also there is wine that gladdens the soul. It is my prayer that we are going to get everything in Christ. There is no answer except in Jesus Christ. Jesus is the answer. He gives us the food. He gives us the